So what? Uh, Ch- Chelsea Green is a Tyler Swift of Deathcore? <laughs> Yo! Oh, God. Ooh. That's fucking hilarious. Say it in my face. Ooh. Excuse me, why? Welcome to the New Music Podcast. We're your two regular jackoffs from upstate New York. My name's Patrick. And I'm Kyle. Yeah, let's fucking get it. We have um, Marcin. Is that right? Am I saying that right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's, <laughs> what a great start. Um, to, from from Violent Answer, what the fuck is good, dude? Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, uh, it's a it's a pleasure. <laughs> Not a problem, man. I'm glad that um I'm honestly kind of stoked uh that um Breakout has been sending us so many good bands. Like I'm yeah. not I haven't been disappointed in a single one of the bands that they've sent us. And uh I really like this new direction, which is something that um you brought up just a minute ago. Um, this new direction of like new metal meets hardcore shit. I'm really mm-hmm. fucking vibing with it. And you guys kind of have like a unique flavor um to the way that you guys do it. So could you tell me a little bit about that? Um, well, uh, I think like we, uh, when you describe your genre, like we, we're using uh, this new, new hardcore uh, stuff for, for our genre. And I think it, it really, uh, r- um, looks different in many, in many bands. Like, I think there's like two kinds of bands uh, that uses this, uh, this, this genre uh, as its own. Uh, first, uh, first are like those, uh, mostly, uh, new metal bands with some metal courage stuff. Those, I think those sound more like if you'd take a new metal band and add some breakdowns and add some heavier chugs and some maybe more screamed vocals. And the second part is when you have like a more hard core-ish, metal core band and there are only like a small, small flavors to it with, uh, with this new, like a little new metal vibes. And I think, I think we're more like this, the second one where we mostly play like a heavy, heavy shit ton of uh, hardcore songs, but we're just adding this little, this little stuff for, for the nostalgia vibes, like, uh, in a, in some riffs or in a vocal flow on in lyrics, mm-hmm. which makes you like, feel it's, it's not strictly hardcore. Mm-hmm. It's got something else. And maybe you're going through to through your memory and remembering some, uh, some older stuff. And you think like, hmm, maybe it's, there's something of, uh, of new metal in there. So yeah, yeah. That's what we're going for. We're not trying to be a new metal band with a modern, uh, tone. To it we're just trying to add a little flavor you know of course of course yeah. it, it, i definitely feel you on the uh the hardcore but with some new vibes to it so like um so kind of uh, the way that i describe bands that are similar to you is just mostly most of the new um inspiration comes from like the grooves that you guys use which aren't always breakdowns but they sometimes kind of come off almost like a breakdown um, just because of the way that certain chug patterns will go, certain flows that like a vocalist will will try to pull off while still maintaining like that hardcore style scream. It's always very interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. I think like in our song, No One To Follow, our first single, the thing that sounds most new metal-ish to me is like, mm, I think, of course, the grooves, but if it comes to vocals, the vocals are screamed all the way, which is very, very har- uh, hardcore. No rapping. Like- yeah, but but yeah. it's got that flow. There's a lot of lyrics, you know. This song has shit ton of lyrics, and yeah. I think that flow is kind of rubbish. Even though I'm screaming all the way, I think that there's something in that flow that doesn't give you any break, and you feel like maybe he's rapping, but he's not, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. well, because you yeah. you're maintaining the same tone, which a lot of rappers do. You you keep yourself on That's one right. like pitch that you like, and like you're usually it's one that like that that vocalist is extremely comfortable in, and they know that they can kind of just like go ham. I know, yeah, yeah, I know that, my own that was the direction. Experience. Yeah. It's always fun. It's always fun. And um is it is it are you guys like a different type of band for Poland because I got to be honest, I don't know that many Polish bands. Um I think that mostly on Polish scene if it comes to sounds like that, and uh, we've got some some metalcore bands like a strictly metalcore bands bands like mostly inspired by maybe architects and stuff like that, where you've got a uh, single on choruses and genty riffs and something and stuff like that. There are some good bands, good sounding bands, first of all. Uh, but there's this, the second type of bands are this straight up uh, hardcore old school 
uh, bands, but mostly in Poland, there there is mostly black metal, you know? Mo mostly people yeah. listen to black metal in Poland, and that's probably because uh, Behemoth or uh, Mgła or those bands where, where people mostly like uh, black metal. But if it comes to, to this style, I think I think we, we gave, gave people something new and we're excited. After. And people are actually excited that that there's something something else to listen to. <laughs> something else other than fucking black metal <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, but there's there there's shit ton of abilities uh, who who's only listening to black metal and fuck would would spit on us in a second, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know. You guys spit pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we spit back. So so when are we gonna start hearing some some blackened like hardcore riffs from you guys? Is that gonna be a thing Shit. now? Is that what you're saying? What is up with you blackened <laughs> right now, bro? Like, like maybe every... that's the direct maybe they that's the direction. Like we love uh, justice uh, for the dent, you know the band? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're 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 kinda hardcore uh hardcore but they've got some black and black and stuff, maybe <laughs> maybe something like that. Uh, I don't think it maybe it would be too much. No, and I think that like people often confuse um, what makes something a blackened sound as opposed to just being, you know, noisy, industrial and just That's having true. over overall satanic themes like you can have. It's weird because t people kind of take a lot of um, different elements from different like different occult things and that makes it blackened apparently. Yeah, so, like, yeah, that's true. And like that whole element of like black magic and all that stuff, which is cool for what it is, but like that's not always, you know, what exactly makes something black end or black metal. Whereas in your instance, like to be a new hardcore band doesn't mean that you guys rap over metal beats. That's it, true. You know, you guys <laughs> have your own flow. You're more of a hardcore band with some new groove. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's mostly uh, uh, depends on the vibe. Like with a black metal, like. It's mostly uh, about the the theme, the the vibe, the the stylistic of it all, and I think it's the same the same with uh, with our stuff. Aesthetically, you guys definitely yeah. look like a new metal band, like, <laughs> and yeah. not like in a bad way. Like you guys look like fucking like you're ripping off Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I don't think that at all. Yeah, <laughs> that would be an insult. <laughs> what a fucking. What a fucking band to go to. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't look, that's the weird thing about new metal is that you can go you could you could say slipknot is new metal. Is it really? I don't know. Not really. I uh, I personally don't think it is. But, but but actually if we try to to choose the genre for slipknot we'd we have a hard time doing it. I don't think yeah. that's uh, what's clo what's that. closer? What's closer? <laughs> I don't even know. Like they're a tough band because they have thrash moments, they have new moments, they definitely they have hardcore moments. They have fucking true. And I'm just I, gonna I... call them. I'm just gonna call them metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a band. Oh, a band <laughs> that's know? that's for sure. <laughs> fucking hey, dude. And uh, when did? Uh, for... No, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Well, uh, first of all, I think that we should just fuck those genres, like. Uh, we I said that the... in the last <laughs> the last interview like just fuck genres just just yeah like it, it's never ending story and it ever, always leads to nothing and it doesn't really help either it's just more of like gatekeeping i think that's why we have genres <laughs> and just gatekeeping <laughs> but sometimes i think sometimes it helps when you've got a new listener that tries to uh, find some new bands maybe someone like through slipknot and he thinks like i want to listen to something similar so maybe maybe then the, the the new metal thing would help him find like uh, I don't know corn, but uh, other than that, for us when we already know these bands, are the, those those uh, never ending uh, argues about what's what like uh, fuck that. Yeah, that's just that's just gatekeeping. I fucking hate it. It's like come on. Yeah. Welcome to the gatekeeping podcast. We're uh... <laughs> yeah. Yo PM. <laughs> let's. let's I, I better PM? buy that. I better buy the fucking domain now because it's probably <laughs> probably a fucking thing already. Yeah, it probably is. And you know what? Whatever. I'll let somebody take it's that. It's probably not even title. a music thing either. It's probably not even a music podcast either. Or it's probably D and D. <laughs> no, I've been like low key trying to figure out how to play that shit because I saw a couple of stuff on my TikTok and I'm like, man, that shit looks fucking good like, it looks like fun yeah i don't know it, it's you got to get the right crew that's what i've always said like i've never mm -hmm. i've never played a campaign but like from the people that i know who are into it they always say you just got to get the right people playing and then yeah. you have a good time i don't know but 
I don't know. I I, I get the vibe that you don't uh, necessarily fuck with D and D. Maybe Pokemon. Maybe Yu Gi Oh. No. Uh, well, I actually I actually uh, am a fan of uh, Magic and Gathering. I I okay. used to be such a nerd with that. <laughs> Buying shit ton of cards, but uh, never in D and uh, I've never played it, pr- probably because I never had a friends to do it. Mm-hmm. Maybe if I knew someone who who's actually playing it, I would love to to come and. Join I would them. love to try because it sounds yeah. really cool. It really yeah. sounds really fun. The only part that's really like a pain in the ass about doing tabletop D and D is a, it's a lot of math, and I got to be honest, I'm not good at math. I don't. I just don't. <laughs> yeah, and I also... think the other one is like creating a character. There's another one that where part's it's like. Fun. Fuck! I want to be perfect, but (laughs) do I want to be a troll or like like do I want to be a like a fucking asshole or do I want to actually take this seriously? You know, (laughs) because I've heard a lot of people just make stupid fucking characters and they work. (laughs) They just work. Um, in my last band, uh, the roadie for that band was very was so into D and D. Like he was the kind of guy who would create characters that would literally just break the game. That was his whole thing was like, I don't like playing for serious, like playing to be, you know, to finish a campaign. I like making characters that will literally break the game and make you question how this is even possible. <laughs> I, just, I, I saw a video one time. It was funny. It was something like, um, yeah, I made a gay troll and he's like crazy. He's a nice athlete and all this <laughs> other stuff. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, yes, I love it. I mean, fuck it. Why not? Yeah, fuck it. Why not? <laughs> But I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears here a little bit. Um, so when did when did Violent Answer exactly um first form? Well, we actually uh, I think we started making music in uh, 2019, and at first at first it was only our drummer and guitarist because they were they knew each other from their last band, and like mm-hmm. uh, I think they were telling me a story that one time they played a show with their ex band, and they were super pissed off after that. And they went home and recorded our first de- first demo song. And after that, uh, when the, the they split up with, with the with the band, uh, they knew me uh, just from the scene. They knew I sing, and they knew my solo project where uh, where I'm making music. And they just wrote me. They sent me those demo, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's heavy!" <laughs> and uh, they they bought me they bought me in the first in the first second. And in 2019, we started to. To writing it mm-hmm. and and few other songs and then uh, then the second guitarist and bassist join and we finished it in 2020 nice nice and this was um probably all like pre-covid and all that yeah yeah we started pre-covid but the most of recording happened actually during covid during probably. covid i <laughs> yeah. think i think vocal vocals were recorded during covid but we actually finished recording drumming in studio right before in oh, February, so we were quite lucky about that. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's like you so, finish the instrumentals first, and then you just do the vocalist. Vocals yeah, yeah, but, right I, but I already had I already had uh, lyrics and stuff before. Just we just recorded like the second time, you know. Yeah. So, but it took some time, uh, and and all the videos came during COVID, and mm-hmm. uh, all the graphics. It was shit ton of work and all the it only made and it harder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, I definitely fuck with some of the uh, merch designs that you guys have uh, put together. In fact, it looks like you're wearing one of them right now. Yeah, I actually wear one. <laughs> Look at that. See, I respect that when a guy is willing to wear his own merch for shit like that. That's important because if you well, don't fuck with it, then well, I think there's there's some there's some stigma about wearing some merch. I, I even know that my base my basis has a uh, opposite. Uh, view mm-hmm. about this topic because some people think like if you if you're wearing your own merch it's like you're sucking your own cock you know <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> no nah, bro I just I just love no. it I just like the I just like the shirt but in I, I don't know maybe maybe it's only thing in Poland but I, I heard stories like that that people think that it's just lame to wear its own merch but but I just love the shirt I think it looks cool uh, so yeah I don't, that's all. I don't even End think there's story. anything weird about sucking your own dick. Like if you can do it, I just like high five to you, man. Because I can't respect. Do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so, fucking respect. If I'm Hell just yeah. being <laughs> Oh my god. I got somebody commenting on the TikTok saying, Can't use your discharge as toothpaste, please. What? Listen here. Can what? I use what? 
damn that got really fucking crazy out of nowhere dude tiktok is wild though <laughs> tiktok is wild are you guys on tiktok yet no no we, we thought about that but we don't really know what to put on there like don't worry dude we're... i got you i'll post up some demos like, just, just, <laughs> po- just post anything at this point yeah like, we it. i think we i think we could probably but uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, the thing is, is that just like not all bands are actually like initially content creators. Yeah. So sometimes it helps to bring a content creator into the mix and say, hey, we're going to have you help us out with making content for TikTok, even if it's something as simple as just sharing a clip from your music video. Just yeah. take one or minute just... out of it that you think yeah. like is like the highlight of the song. You could take that and there you go. You got your fucking hit. Or you can yeah, just look probably. at him and be like, hey, can you teach me how to do this? And then we'll just do it. <laughs> <laughs> like as you're doing it, well, teach me <laughs> and it's not mutually exclusive to tiktok either you can repurpose all of that content that you oh, make yeah. anyways and i feel like yeah, that's true. Just, i think that's kind of like the goal with any kind of like especially with bands now is you guys have to kind of learn how to repurpose your content in a way something i've had to learn since i've started this podcast you know oh i'm still learning tiktok like shit <laughs> oh, <my laughs> so i'm scrolling through i see that you are confirmed a featured x member yeah so are you your your uh, vocals for hire on featured x now and uh what was the process like as far as getting um into that because we had uh tuck o'leary on the podcast not and, that long oh my ago. god he's a fucking great ah, human yeah being. fucking legend yeah yeah <laughs> he's I, a I saw fucking that. great human being <laughs> <laughs> well it was it was really nice first of all i just uh plain simple i just wrote them in an email I don't know if there's some kind of submission uh, size of I, I I don't remember. I just wrote an email, email and uh, and they just uh, wrote me back like three months uh, due to to the to this time, mm-hmm. and, and just simply I made my account and and I <laughs> and I got in. So yeah, the site the site is amazing because there are a lot of crazy crazy uh, nice vocalists there. Maybe maybe we'll use it uh, on our uh, next uh, next uh, album. Who knows. I mean, uh, fuck it. I mean, the platform's <laughs> there. The platform's yeah, the plat- there. Fuck it. Yeah, it's sick. It's sick as fuck. So, so yeah, I got in. Uh, uh, <laughs> it just feels good, you know. Uh, well, what else to say? <laughs> <laughs> so you're in. Have you gotten hire anybody me. requesting you just yet? Hire me. <laughs> hire me. Yo, <laughs> PSA, fucking hire me. Let me do screamies over your music. <laughs> right, right in the bio hire me <laughs> yeah but actually fun fact uh, uh when i uh, re- uh, when there was a i don't know how to call it drop vocalist drop right <laughs> when they were uh, announcing my my name there was a lot of vocalists joining in the uh, the site and i even saw someone uh, tweeting uh, that uh, the amount of vocalists joining the feature x is gonna kill it and i was like hmm really because uh, there are some big names, but there are all they're also joined a lot of uh, vocalists from a uh, underground bands li- mm-hmm. like like mine, and some people speculated that it's gonna be too much and it's gonna just be a complete mess. You know, that's what that's what he was talking about. But it, it it's like gonna be a quote unquote complete mess. But you know what? I don't really think so because, I mean, look at you see underground bands; they're not known. I mean, you could just literally, you can have an underground band that's on Featured X, talk to somebody that is on Featured X that's bigger than them. So technically, really, mm. that's that's really not a big blow up. And it's not going to blow up, in my opinion, to be completely honest, because there's so many fucking bands out there. There's so many fucking people on Featured X now. It's just... And it's not it. just, it's just vocalists anymore. You got guitarists, yeah. bassists, session drummers. And true. Got graphic Even graphic designers. designers. Yeah, I was just yeah. about to say that. Graphic designers. And they're trying to get and what Tuck told us, we're also they're also trying to get podcasts on there too. Yeah. So it's like there's a lot of potential for growth yeah. with with just the idea of featured X alone. There's just a lot of growth potential, in my opinion, for people to think that it will blow up. And there's also too many well recognized big names on there. With honest, like they and I think that they are budgeting themselves properly. You know, yeah. like like just if I could think, like for instance, I know people would probably say that it's a little bit kind of crazy that CJ from Thy Art Is Murder 
could charge a thousand dollars for a feature mm. like but dude you don't realize how much pull that has people will click yeah. on your music video just because they see True. that you're featured that will get you probably five thousand clicks on anything you upload just because you had him featured on it so you think about that you also think about the smaller bands that are on there how much uh potential for collaboration that is with the smaller guys but also keep in mind that like it, it depends on your budget so yeah. like but, I think, but on the other hand, I think that a lot of bands are buying all those uh, ads on Facebook, on Google ads, and those are, aren't cheap either. So if I have to choose between a stupid uh, YouTube ad, which, which would give me some clicks, but if I get, a, for example, this CJ, uh, we'd probably have a true, true listener uh, coming to, to our shit, you know? Absolutely. So it's it's, it's, it's a way in... better promotion. Yeah, I'm kind of indifferent about YouTube ads because, like, I don't pay attention to any single one of them. I'm not even going to lie to you. From a YouTuber standpoint, or I'm not a YouTuber, but from a YouTuber watcher standpoint, I don't fucking care about ads on YouTube. I immediately skip them. True, true. So but honestly, the- like, YouTube, I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste my money on a YouTube ad. That's just my opinion, but... Yeah, but but there's a uh, funny, fun, uh, strange, strange thing to it that if you'd buy a YouTube ad, which you can skip, if someone just sees this ad, it's all it's already making you uh, yeah, true, get one true. view. So someone can yeah. just buy some some views and get like a hundred thousand views, uh, but those are all, all from the the stupid ad they bought for like few 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 hundred bucks. Well, that also ties in with how um, how easily influenced certain people are over vanity metrics. And that mm-hmm. is what I would consider a vanity metric. People who buy an Instagram page that already has 10,000 uh, followers on it. People that'll buy a YouTube channel that already has 1,000 uh, subscribers on it. Those are vanity metrics. Yeah. Those are those are people even, who want... Even though that's not good to do on YouTube. Right, that's what I'm saying. Is like <laughs> It misrepresents um, the amount... I guess you could say it misrepresents clout. And not that I like really ultimately like most people don't really care um how much clout a band has unless you get to a point where you're like slaughter to prevail where people are kind of just tired of being shoved you know slaughter to prevail down their throat which is why you know you get like the reverse aspect of like this has been marketed too heavily it's a good yeah. band but you guys are putting it in front of us too much and i don't know and where that's you when you just get fucking old from it it just gets fucking old and you're like you know what? i don't even feel like listening to this band anymore i just see him so many fucking times yeah but hey brand awareness is key though uh, how no, else are you get yourself out there if if you're hated mm. that means that you have if like if 80 percent of the people watching hate you but 20 percent still fuck with you and we're talking about millions of people 20 percent of a million people is still a lot of people i mean look at icp Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> oh, I glitched out there for a second. Yeah. yeah, you glitched out a lot, but we heard everything yeah. that you said. So Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. 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 He's fading and away. Gone. <laughs> no, this is a good and test. And we're gone. No, this is a good test. You guys can hear me now, right? Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. Because when when we finally start yeah, streaming, just, I need to know. I know you're, you're. Yeah, you're just kind of lagging, but okay. With with your camera, you're kind of lagging. So. Okay. So I'll just stand completely still. There you go. Got a boy. <laughs> no one's gonna notice. This. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Nobody will notice. It'd be alright. Oh God. So. I want to know um, what the the writing process was like for you guys. Like, um, obviously, you came in um, after some of the instrumentals were already written. Um, was there dis- a discussion about what type of uh, lyrics you guys were going? What like the idea of what you wanted from lyrics, or was that kind of given like free range to you? Mm. Uh, when the when the guys wrote the first demo, we were, it was just it was the demo for our song "Rest in Hatred." And it was uh, quite more hardcore sounding. More, I like to call it square sounding. It was just more simple. Square. And I find, I, find, I remember we met uh, three of us uh, the first time, and we were talking about our inspirations. And I actually showed mm, those guys uh, from our band, like Alpha Wolf Dealer, and they didn't know the, those bands. And we all actually fell in love, <laughs> love in this style. So when we started to uh, uh, record. Uh, writing new songs 
the instrumentals were coming coming in really quickly. Our guitarist Philip is a fucking monster. When when he's getting in this in this state of uh, writing process, he's spitting out those tracks really fast. And I, I remember we didn't even have um, many uh, many things to change. We just loved it right away. So mm -hmm. when I started to uh, thinking about the lyrics, uh, I re I'm re writing the writing the lyrics uh, myself, but the topics are are chosen by by all of us. So so we we usually just meet and talk about uh, what do we think about those tracks, how do we feel with them, and what topics should we choose for them. So yeah, those and those are mostly inspired by some uh, real events or something that we went through. Uh, and we're ju they're just uh, giving me ideas, some topics, and I'm just uh, writing it uh, on the paper and then singing along. So yeah, I've got some, I've got a freedom of of writing it, but the the topic itself is chosen by all of us. Nice, nice. And you, so, so rest in hatred was the first song that you guys wrote collectively as a band. Yeah, it was actually the first song. And I, and I think there's it's, always you a can special it place. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, I don't know. I, I think you can you can hear that it's the first song because it's like mm, the slowest one. I think it's the simplest one of all. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just the thing, uh, something that the, that I think about it. But uh, is it special though? <laughs> I don't know. I, lo I love them all. Uh, and the, the the few next ones just came right right after. So nice, nice. Fuck, I'm, I'm like literally accidentally buying tracks by you guys on Bandcamp right now. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks, dude. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, and so you're not kidding. Damn, these lyrics are pretty fucking long. So was there yeah, a... if you if you look at no one to follow, it's it's just uh, uh, I'm glad we we had time to rehearse and I didn't have to like learn it uh, uh, just sitting and writing it uh, and uh, reading it. I just learned it uh, by by singing along to it. So, <laughs> but those were fucking hard to write. <laughs> that and like string work. together like certain patterns so that they sound a certain way when you're vocaling yeah. and like when you're vocaling. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but <laughs> um, I have to imagine though you guys probably will get tired of being compared to bands like Alpha Wolf because you do stand apart from bands like Alpha Wolf and. Um, I have to imagine that that would get annoying after a while. I can I can also see like knock yeah, loose. Yeah, yeah. I can also that, see knock loose. That's right. Also, <laughs> many people many people says that I think because of the my my quiet high vocals. Yeah, uh, I I immediately thought of knock loose as soon as I heard your vocals. I was like knock loose. Hold on. That is not an insult, <laughs> by the way. That is not a. Yeah, really that's, not. that's not an insult. So maybe if you're saying that we can get high, get tired, I think that's something we uh, we got on uh, ourselves because. At first, when uh, when I, when we were uh, mm, releasing our music and publishing it on social media, there's something some some people just add some like uh, for fans of, and we we used to write like for fans of Alpha Wolf Dealer because those were uh, the most most known I think at, at the time, and uh, and actually we got tired by by doing it ourselves. <laughs> Because we were like, fuck, we're all, we're also we're always talking about this Alpha Wolf. We love the band, but I think it's too much. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's much more bands that we're inspired to, uh, we're inspired by, and uh, and it's just the the thing that also also many people uh, hears uh, the the fact that it's our our music is mixed by the same dude that mixed Alpha Wolf. So it's just another thing. To add another to the, layer on top of it, whole, yeah. 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 Have you guys spoken with any of the guys from Alpha Wolf yet? Actually, actually, yes. Because th there's another story. Uh, when I'm when uh, let's get back to the rest in hatred times. Okay. Uh, when we when we met first time, uh, and I showed uh, Alpha Wolf to our guitarist, and he said, "Holy fuck, that's uh, that that's great." And at the time, he had a six string guitar, and he wanted to buy a seven string. And he ac accidentally <laughs> bought the same guitarist that uh, guitar that Sabian from Alpha Wolf uses. That's funny. <laughs> and he was and he was thinking <laughs> what strings to buy, so he 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 basically DM'd him on on Instagram, <laughs> and and they were just speaking about string gouges and stuff. 
So yeah, and later and later the time when we were mixing our our, our album uh, through the through the lands from Australia, uh, he uh, he spoke with Sabian once again, and they actually listened it while he was mixing. So hell yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. See, I think it's important that bands like Alpha Wolf, you know, when they hear that, oh, you know, this band is being compared to us all the time, that they, you know, build a relationship with those bands because ultimately, if if whether it's intentional or not, if you guys sound like them or not, chances are not only are they fans, but they also, will, you know, want to build that relationship and you might be a good fit for an opening act that's, uh, you know, once shows come yeah, back. Yeah, that obviously. will be lovely. And the and they actually were about to come to Poland at the beginning of uh, coronavirus. So maybe if they'll come back, what's yeah. up? <laughs> yeah, here, here we are. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want to dwell too much on the COVID topic because it is a bit of a downer. But how yeah, are okay. you guys doing as far as, you know, case numbers and uh, the possibility of shows coming back? You're doing better than us, Pat. Well, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> Everybody's we're, doing better than us. <laughs> we're, we're healthy and that, that's what matters, I think. Uh, we're getting through quite well. We're just we're just close at home and, and that's all. Glad, glad there's such thing as internet, Google Drive, and and <laughs> audio interfaces, yeah. and we can record and write music from our homes. So that that's that's one thing uh, that's that makes us get through uh, a little bit easier. Not only that, but like you guys have a pretty sick merch spread. Um, if you guys really mm -hmm. like drilled that in, I feel like you guys could make some money. People, and the funny thing is, you got, you could market it in a way where it doesn't even look like you guys are a band. Because I <laughs> I could see people picking up these shirts just because they like the designs, yeah. not even yeah, yeah. they like the band. <laughs> Would you guys be uh, like? You guys could gatekeep in a way and just make a joke out of that, you know, like oh, <laughs> wearing all these violent answer shirts, but like they've never li named three bands now <laughs> or na name three songs, <laughs> name three songs. Nailed it. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that merge, merge design is, is a was a big thing for us because we we actually liked this certain style. And I think it's it's getting uh, uh, getting some attention. This this kind of uh, kind of vibe in those T-shirts. There are some graphic designs that that got that style. And I think it, it could it could defend itself as a own branding uh, brand uh, of, of clothing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Now, I'm curious um, about the features that you have on here because you've got Darius mm -hmm. um, Urbanski. Is that how you say it? Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's a, uh, that, those, are, uh, those are hard names to spell for you probably. Uh, yeah, those are uh, Darius, Darius Urbanski <laughs> and Bartosz Pat, you were way off. I know. Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Polish is fucking crazy. Uh, if you if you'd ever hear a song metal song uh, written in Polish, uh, you'd get crazy. <laughs> you would you would you would also you will be all fucking Link blown me. away. Link there's a there's right a now. one band you gonna you you need to write this up uh, front side, and the, the name of the band is in English, but they're uh, writing uh, songs in Polish, and it's it's even heavier because of that. So, <laughs> but but getting back to the uh, to the features. Um, yeah. We were like we were speaking uh, back in, by a few few minutes earlier about the features and how you can promote your music by buying some some famous guys, but we kind of went opposite. Uh, if it mm -hmm. comes to our first EP, we just went for our friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are basically our our dudes. So the the Darius is just uh, my buddy from from I'm from our city. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was once at his ex band concert, and I knew how how well he sings, and I loved his style. Uh, he's got this rap ish, uh, also this rap ish vibe, because he's listening to a lot of to shit like Scarlord and stuff like that. So when you hear our his part at Vanitas, I think some of it is getting through. And also Bartosz Jankowski is just uh, uh, he was playing some time ago with our drummer carol so they knew each other and those are just our buddies and uh, and and that's all we just went for our crew <laughs> that's awesome no and tell me a little bit about um bartos bartos <laughs> oh fuck it D don't worry don't worry he's not gonna be mad <laughs> good i'm glad i wasn't worried um 
<laughs> um, but yeah, uh, because that's that. I feel like that song stands out though. No one to follow. Like out of mm-hmm. all the songs that I've heard so far, I think that that one really does stand out for you guys the most. Um, so mm-hmm. what was the process like with just getting him on the song and also like making sure that it fit the vibe? So I think he was the. We knew we got. We need to get him right on on the on the song because uh, actually the no one to follow uh, has a strong lyric. It actually really relates to to the Bartosz in a, in a way really lyrically. Uh, it's speaking a, a story about a person we we knew both of uh, our band and uh, Bartosz also. So his his part is actually like what what he's gonna add to to the topic you know mm-hmm. so it just it just me- pieces went together and it, it has to be him no absolutely and i think that yeah. like when you think about bands like body snatchers where like people don't really think of hardcore having as much emotional like i'd say people outside of the genre don't think of it as having such a high emotional um element to it but it's so crucial like it just doesn't seem genuine if it doesn't feel like you meant it when you sang it and that's why usually i I go back to the band body snatchers especially with that song Mm -hmm. um 17 13 17 or something like that yeah yeah, that's a that's a heavy one it and you can feel it that he's he's speaking from heart yeah yeah like and interviewed chris whited he had told us like that the one part where um in the middle of the song where he's like I can't even remember the lyrics right now off the top of my head, but can I, oh yeah, can I die yet? When he was talking about the first time they heard that back, one of the members yeah. was like, that's, that was such an emotional moment because that's, you know, that was what his mother had said to him. And so like, when you hear shit like that, I'm like, damn, that gives like another mm-hmm. layer to the song, another reason to like it, another reason to kind of like, I don't know, I get a little emotional sometimes mm-hmm. thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't think you're going to get emotional, no one to follow, but maybe, Maybe it's gonna be a good track to beat someone up. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good fight. Or maybe track, it's gonna sure. stop you. Or maybe it's gonna stop you from beating someone up. Like you're gonna listen to it and be like, Oof, "Okay, <laughs> I'm fine." I, I used to say that moshing was like my stress relief, and it's been kind of tough this last mm-hmm. year not being able to go throw down. But you know, that's that's what I think of moshing is. Is like you know I'm gonna go into the safe space, throw down, and I know that like if I hurt anybody. I did it by accident. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah, and also no one's judging you. Uh, and then that's, that's the second thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Unless someone is, <laughs> then you're gonna fuck him up. <laughs> that I actually do kind of love, like low key. I do kind of love that there are still crowd killers out there because you kind of need that one guy to like just focus on and just like fuck him up because you know he's in the wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> much as we shit on crowd killers on this show, I am gonna take a, a sympathetic t- turn and say, you know what? Let's go fuck that guy up just cause. Just cause. Yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, there's something in it. I remember when I was uh, on a show, um, on a emu show, and there was a guy who who was wearing those uh, camo shorts and tank top, and he was like two meters tall. And right before the show, he was stretching up. <laughs> And I, I'm with my friend, we were just standing and looking like him, like fucking stretching up. And I was, oh shit, <laughs> this, he's ready. This motherfucker is gonna get, make make some harm. That is literally the definition of a crowd killer. Like if you <laughs> yeah. had a picture, such a cliche. Said how to be a crowd killer? The guy warms up, cargo pant, cargo shorts, <laughs> camo with a wife beater on. He's fucking yeah. ready. <laughs> Uh, homemade tattoos was so cliche oh my god homemade tattoos yeah <laughs> and i could see like one earlobe is ripped oh shit. i could ooh. I'm, I'm like getting the full picture right here <laughs> and for the and for the contrast a uh, pair of vans <laughs> yes oh yeah for for the contrast because because he's a metal car fan no it's either converse <laughs> or fucking vans it's one of the two it's Yo, not do you still fuck with converse anymore because those are my favorite I, I fucked with Vans. I love. I actually Vans. forgot about Converse. So <laughs> see, this is what I'm talking about. Nobody's yeah, I don't think I don't. I don't think anybody's talked about them lately. But fucking Vans, those are my shit. I love Vans. They're awesome. Well, fuck them because they stopped doing Warp Tour. Mm. Listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's gonna come back. It's gonna be under a different name. It's gonna be like. Wet Franz is gonna own it. Probably. <laughs> Rob, he's gonna own it. 
Yeah, Franz is going to own it, and it's going to be called Watchfest. <laughs> Bro, I'm sick of talking about him because I already saw a fucking... <laughs> I saw a fucking thing that he posted on uh, Instagram. He's like, "We broke up, guys," and I yeah, actually, yeah, I saw that. And I actually left the house. I was like, "Bro, you left your own fucking house? No, <laughs> and, and, and no. In, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> but if it's my fucking house, no, you're leaving. I'm sorry. You like, know what a yeah. strange and 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 he's such a ba- badass as he portrays himself. So what's going yeah, on it's yeah. it's funny because he portrays himself like that and then he posts like kind of saddy stuff like that and it's like and a lot of people are like bro you're a bitch just tell her to leave not it's, you the fuck it's, it's, <laughs> it's probably Four gonna hours. be even it's probably gonna be even funnier like if uh, in a week in a week or two we're gonna have some new bitches on only fans and he'll oh, be like yeah. all right he's yeah. a new porn star with me oh yeah <laughs> or it's gonna be like yo i found this new bitch that i was fucking she's my girl now <laughs> no he's like, just gonna focus on solo content for a while yeah <laughs> oh, shit. yo i just realized what you just said I was like, Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah so this week on only fans we're gonna try to make this work <laughs> <laughs> Let's redefine microphone. <laughs> Will it fit? Mm-hmm. We'll be about to no. today. <laughs> Will it fit? <laughs> oh my god, he's gonna quickly become the meme of the guy with the glass jar. Yo, mm. shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yo, that has been coming up like that. That video has come up in real life way more often than I like to admit. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> yeah. I need to stop. I want to see that up. ever again. I mm-hmm. think I need to stop bringing it up. I don't need to see that video ever again. I've only seen it once, and I don't want to see it another time. That's that's, that's right. Same with same with two guys, one cup, or no, two, two girls, guys? one cup. I'm gonna say two <laughs> they guys. Did, they did <laughs> guys it's gonna be <laughs> coming to OnlyFans. Uh, I guess so. A theater two guys, you. one cup. <laughs> oh my god. Same Wait. with one guy, one hammer. I don't want to see that shit ever again. Like all that other shit. No, I don't want to Yo, see that shit again. There's a hammer guy on TikTok. That's pretty cool. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> he's not I fucking he's not hate you. You're describing. He's like taking a hammer to things. Like, can can I hit it with a hammer? No. Uh, no. We, you oh can... yeah, I've only seen him like once. He's he's. I'm sorry. Like, I, I I don't mean this in like a homophobic or like in a homosexual way, but I I think he's just cute the way he goes about it. Like <laughs> he's just he's he seems so innocent about it the way he goes and it's like. Can you like? Cause he seems so nervous while he's doing it, but he's like, "I'm, I'm gonna, I'm excited because I'm gonna hit it with a hammer." Can you? <laughs> it just fucking shatters. No, nope. no. no, you can't hit it with a hammer. <sighs> what about your best friend? No, don't do that. Don't do that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! God. So. Back to violent answer. You touched <laughs> a right. little bit before <laughs> on uh, drumming, um, mixing up the when you were doing recording. You did some drumming in the beginning and then some after. Were you doing a lot of like post process drumming or was it like because uh, because it sounds like live drums to me when I'm listening to it, but I'm not really mm. sure. It's hard to tell now. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to tell nowadays. Like there are so many bands that got some MIDI drums. And it sounds actually amazing. And there is even uh, this uh, this trend. Some people, some drummers think that if they rec- if they write uh, drums in MIDI, it's gonna push them even farther to then learn it and play something harder than they actually can play. Yeah. So there's there's this trend of, but actually our drums are are live. Yeah, we recorded them in a studio uh, near near our city, Poznan, and. Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe Lance, when there was, then when he was mixing, maybe he added some uh, some samples for maybe kick or snare, snare, maybe something like that. I, I'm actually not sure uh, how how he did that, how he mixed it. Mm-hmm. But we we recorded all the stuff uh, live, uh, live microphones uh, without triggers and stuff. So yeah, that, that's basically it. We our drummer really wanted to to record it live because uh, when he's in studio, he feels like. Sometimes we just get on some new ideas and we like to change yeah. change things in a sec in a matter of seconds. Or like just like I I, I feel like when drummers riff and they, and you let them kind of have free reign, you never know what they're gonna come up with. And like especially in a True. live setting, a lot of live drummers um kind of just like come up with new fills on the spot. And sometimes it sounds right. better than what was written on record. 
Like mm-hmm. I know, for instance, like Fit for a King, I like their live fills better than I like the yeah. ones on record. Um, hey, and I think that adds a little bit more to uh, not just the live experience, but also kind of like when you're tracking live, you never know when you're going to come up with something that you wouldn't have thought of, you know, behind the computer, just dragging and dropping and clicking MIDI drums. <laughs> but I do think <laughs> that like most producers, though, do like sample over certain kicks, especially like certain takes yeah. or they'll they'll make one sample out of one like really good kick that came out during the live session and then they'll just use that one or like a a handful of different ones so that's why i'm always curious like especially now because anybody can fucking sit behind um what is it um easy drummer or something like that and just make a Mm, solid sounding record you don't you don't need the full band but you guys are a full band so yeah, and I think we, we we just wanted to to embrace it and do it uh, do it the old school way, because it's it's a lot of fun and it's we've, we're doing it with passion, so that's just another layer to to have more fun and just make it uh, make it the way the way it is. Cool, cool. And so, can we expect like some Scar Lord type shit on the next record? <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I think uh, there's there's one track there's that's because we're already writing some some new tracks. I, I gotta say that right now. So we already have one uh, one demo that's gonna be. Uh, I, I don't have lyrics for uh, right now, but there is a potential to to make some more rapish sound or maybe maybe something like Skyro Skyroll. Who knows? Yeah. But we're, I, we're we're certainly not gonna go for for like a trap beats or. Or we, if, I don't know if you if you heard it, but we actually don't have any samples on our on our uh, on our EP. Yeah, and I, I didn't think we're gonna that. stick with stick. With, yeah, yeah, and I think we're gonna stick stick with it because a lot of those uh, actually uh, th- those new wave bands are using hell a lot of uh, samples and yeah. and shit and some additional like ambience and stuff like that. And we actually wanted to to keep it simple for even more aggression and to make our live shows basically uh, more like hardcore school crushing vibe, you know, just to make Less it make it like, like, like that. yeah, yeah. I think well, we love those this raw uh, raw vibe to it. So we we had no uh, no samples and we're probably gonna stick with it. So so no, that they're not gonna be any uh, uh, within destruction trap tra- beats in the middle of song. <laughs> you heard it here shots fired at within destruction fuck you guys yeah but i love it but i love it <laughs> i i do actually love that band it's kind of it's kind of funny like i didn't expect yeah, to like that it's band. funny but but it's but it's lovely <laughs> i didn't expect to like that band at all not the way that i was you know being told about that band but um i liked the early stuff like the like stupidly heavy deathcore early mm-hmm. stuff um mm-hmm. and then the new stuff just kind of like won me over i hated the song hate me at first because of how many times he says i don't give a I fuck don't... if you hate me yeah yeah it's so, I, so cliche I, well i'm less <laughs> like annoyed with like the cliche shit because i've accepted the fact that like how many times are we gonna really sit here and fret about what's original and what's cliche you know that mm-hmm. whole like back and forth like because everything's been said before it's kind of you know hard to say something that hasn't been said but at the same time like repetition is the one thing that i have never yeah. like i still mm-hmm. to this day like get tired of like overly repetitive music but i don't know in your guys's case you guys aren't overly repetitive you have more way too many lyrics for that <laughs> yeah yeah i think like we've got only two songs with actual uh, repeating choruses so uh, and all all the rest is just uh, verse after verse and who the fuck uh, on another verse <laughs> <laughs> and it, you can't you can't even structure tell the structure of the song where's the bridge where's the verse and where's the chorus because it just mixes up no and i i don't necessarily need that vibe especially not from hardcore yeah like knocked loose is, is an example of a band that puts like very clear like it's obviously the chorus but you don't necessarily need that from this genre i don't think no now i don't think so I'm curious about um, the music videos. So, um, "Early Days" is a song we haven't really talked about much today, mm-hmm. and it looks so, like you're in somebody's basement. <laughs> well, uh, that's probably another uh, repeating uh, thing to to do in uh, in this style of music. But 
the, the warehouse videos and there are there are many <laughs> many different uh, different opinions about that because I, I heard I heard when after, uh, Austin Dickey said that uh, f uh, f stop with the warehouse videos <laughs> it's way too too many of them but uh, on the uh, other way uh, on reddit i saw the post that many people supported that bring back the uh, warehouse, vid warehouse videos <laughs> yeah and st stop with the lead shit and bring back the warehouse videos so like it was just uh, i didn't even thought at the time about this we just uh, knew the, the the cool place in our uh, guitarist uh, small city, so we just went in, uh, uh, get it going, and recorded some some head banging. <laughs> so the videos the videos are actually very simple. The, we are just just the the lads and and the music, <laughs> so no not really story driven. But I think that we're we're actually proud of it because. It's it's I not supposed be. to to mean to mean to mean anything, uh, any much of anything. Just just make you headbang with us and make you mm -hmm. feel like maybe some people like to like to watch uh, a video just for for the additional aspect, but not uh, not as uh, uh, on the first place, you know. Well, what I like about early days is that I just feel like when I'm watching how you guys perform and move, I feel like that's how you guys would be on stage. Whereas, um, what is it? Not intoxicated. Um, no one to no follow. One follow. That one's more more effects. You know, that one's mm -hmm. more like you guys are in front of a projector. Like I, it's cool, but I just don't think that that's how you guys look on stage. Whereas yeah. opposed to early days, you definitely look like that's how you perform. Yeah, yeah. So that's great i think it's it's good that we actually have uh, two different videos so so you can see this more ar artistic uh, like a artistic uh, thing for us what we we chose this uh, this creation and like the second one when you can actually see uh, see us jamming along with the song mm -hmm. so we, yeah uh, i we didn't play any show yet <laughs> together so so we can't confirm that that's how how we're looking yeah uh, at this stage. well but, that's kind of all we have to go off of at this point until yeah. shit's ready yeah, to go yeah, but, mm -hmm. that's right yeah but um so i don't see this often in hardcore bands but you did a one take vocal playthrough mm -hmm. and i like yeah it. that's some that's something I, I was really excited for i actually loved uh, videos from bands such as uh, Spirit Box and Carcosa. That's from oh, where I okay. got See, my Carcosa. inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I loved, uh, I loved uh, the Spirit Box one, and also uh, Johnny on Carcosa was. Uh, he he did like for most of the songs probably. Uh, so, so that that's where I drew my inspiration, and I felt like I, I have to do this. So I think that Intoxicated was the song that has like the most versatile vocals and most uh, complicated ones with the most mm, techniques and stuff like that and nowadays a lot of people love to to see to watch like to listen to music in a very uh, technical uh, technical aspects and talk about this shit mm -hmm. so i thought maybe maybe it's going to be interesting to to show uh, to show people what i've got and also we're, we can get back to to not playing shows, and that that was actually the the only way I can show people that I actually can sing my fucking songs. <laughs> that you can actually do your parts. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, those are just five dudes head banging on the video, and how the fuck do you know how they're actually performing? So, and a lot of people care about how the band's performing live. So, uh, I think that was something cool to do, and I think it went out quite quite nicely. Nice, nice. Um, I, I mean, it seems like it's pretty well received. You got a, quite a few reaction videos to it, mm -hmm. or at least a couple, as far as I can tell. So, as far as I can tell, yeah. it's pretty well received. I like the uh, intoxicated guitar playthrough. In fact, I think you guys should do more guitar playthroughs, just because. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the idea. Yeah. Well. That, that's the idea. Also, also a drum playthrough would be would be lovely, and we're yeah. encouraging our drummer because. Uh, when we heard uh, uh, reviews from from Polish press and from from some other from some other people on social media or maybe on Reddit, a lot of people loved the drums. So yeah, that's something that's something ha common happening from from our listeners. So yeah, when we're encouraging our drummer to to record some drum playthroughs, 
because uh, he, he's got he's got uh, <laughs> he's got the uh, uh, the stuff. So right now we're we're changing our uh, place for rehearsals. So maybe maybe it's gonna be a, a great time to to do it. Yeah, and I think that like the the drum playthroughs would be a good opportunity to get your drummer some some endorsements because yeah. true you guys could definitely I mean every band really could use them but I think yeah. watching you know your drummer play would be cool for you guys. Um, now I'm a little curious like what the full band is like when you guys just kind of kick it like what do you guys like when you just you know hang out and you're not like music related do you guys go bowling do you, you know, <laughs> what do you so what do you yeah. Guys do? Uh, me and my friend uh, Max, we we know each other from a, just a small kids, so we love to play some video games, and we're actually playing a shit ton of time in on Valorant. <laughs> we're just we're just getting crazy at Valorant, so we love to we love to play games, uh, both of us, and uh, with the other guys, we just love to to meet and talk about the the music and stuff so the music really really connects us we can just sit a lot sit like uh, all five of us and talk uh, talk shit about some some bands for for hours and never get tired you know i remember i remember once uh, once we meet with with my girlfriend and when she was there and we were talking about the music it was so fucking boring (laughs) because there was only only one topic you know no and yeah but i know girlfriends don't always care about it (laughs) <laughs> my wife sure as shit doesn't she doesn't even listen to the podcast so like i know they don't care uh, I, uh, my girlfriend somewhat listens to this that's actually impressive yeah yeah and she's really into my music that i listen to and stuff like that so good shit mm-hmm. good shit what about you you guys you know sit there kick back and talk about what franz is up to <laughs> like, yeah, hey, we, like Bonds did. we should try that. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great topic to, to just like should should talk about. <laughs> I, I hate you so much. I hate you so don't much. Take, don't, don't pay attention to what Franz does and think, oh, I should try that. No, think for yourself. <laughs> Or for that matter, William Control. Don't don't try to do what William Control does either. Not that he's in no. the hardcore sphere anymore, but still. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm fresh out of questions, so we can just talk about whatever at this point. I, you're talking a little bit about video games. I know that's something that Kyle's yeah. really into. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love a lot of different video games. Like I love shooters like Counter Strike and Valorant. I used to fucking nerd, be a nerd on this, and just spend hours and hours. Uh, also, I'm I'm from Poland, so there's a lot of fucking Russians on our servers, and right. it's always it's it's always lovely to just get on the server and, and listen to all the sukabliets on the chat and scream at each other. Uh, and there, there's <laughs> like it's all it's always a lot of fun. Uh, but like this week, I just thought, <laughs> shit, I'm playing game to stress out. And I'm just getting stressed in the game. <laughs> what yep. am I doing? What am I doing with my life? So yeah, I also I also love card games, but I don't play much of it uh, right now. Uh, like Magic and Got the and Gathering was was my shit. And I used to collect it. I collect uh, those cards in real life. Uh, I've got quite a big collection. Mm, and I don't know. I love many different games. I'm a fan of The Witcher. Uh, it's also a Polish game, so there's a fucking cult from in Poland of the Witcher games. Oh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I heard Is the it? I heard the series for not the video game, but the TV show is pretty good too. Mm-hmm. I've heard. Well, actually, there's a lot of, a lot of people in Poland who actually read the books, and yeah. I f- and I think that those uh, the people who watched the show in Poland were the the biggest net pickers, you know. Oh yeah, like, I mean, come yeah, on. yeah, and and it's the same thing me... with Game of Thrones. It's the same thing with Harry Potter. It's the same shit with like, yeah, yeah. Well, and is I, the Witcher I... based in Poland? Like, I I'm not actually that familiar with. Well, it. it's not, not actually sure. based, and it's it's got some Slavic vibes, but even the author said that uh, that actually there's no Slavic vibes, and it's not in Slavic country, 
but when you when you read the book and when you play the game you 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 have to feel this right uh, the slavic vibe so maybe maybe that's something that he says to defend it and maybe to defend the show because a lot of people uh, were fucking uh, uh shit shit storming all the the stuff with the yeah. uh, uh with the this vibe of the series and so i don't know but actually i actually like the games much more than than the show and the books are incredible so yeah i mean i i don't really know that much about the game itself but it looks like a standard like dungeon crawler style like rpg game I don't know. Well, it's R- it's RPG, but it's very, uh, very uh, uh, oriented on the uh, on the story. I think okay. it's it's very story based. I've and... only played a little bit of it. Um... Yeah, yeah. If you if you don't get into story that much, then you you're not gonna like it. But once you once you like the story and you and you like the vibe of it, then 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 it's just becoming your shit, and you want to play it like three times to get all the yeah. endings. So. <laughs> See? Like that's how I was with Dragon Age Origins, because like with that one, I kind of felt like I had yeah. to, you know, tr- try to figure out all the different storylines and everything, pick a different character, see how how differently yep. it goes. That's kind of like, that's what I like about shit like um, like that, like World of Warcraft. I never really got too into World of Warcraft, but um, I really do think that like if there is an RPG game out there for me, it's probably Diablo. Diablo mm-hmm. is fucking yeah, Diablo great. Diablo is lovely. I'm curious how they're gonna remaster the the second one if it's gonna uh, flop or not. Uh, I'm just I'm scared uh, for my life about it. I I just want them to hurry up and make a mobile version of it because that's the only games I play. They have now. Yeah, well, it flopped. They like it. Nobody. Well, liked yeah, it. it flopped because nobody, nobody wanted it. it. I wanted it. <laughs> I wanted it. You're like the one random fucking person that wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always have time to sit down and fucking play well, it, console. You also gotta think PC. like the marketing for that when it's like, oh, it's on mobile, and then everybody started booing, and he's like, "Do you guys not have phones?" <laughs> like, are you serious? It was, it like, was so cringe. Oh my god, I was like, "Yo, you just fucked your whole shit up." No, yeah, com- complete cringe fest. I like cringe. <laughs> I like cringe. I'm glad someone does. Fuck. <laughs> So Go I am pleasure. already here. Great. <laughs> you guys don't have phones? What the fuck kind of comeback is that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't have phones? What? Like, yes, asshole, we have phones, but we have also have PCs that we want. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I, I realized recently, actually, that the, the game that I was playing on mobile is eerily similar to... Um, to Diablo. to Diablo that was that was kind of how the conversation came up originally with one of the old bandmates that I was um uh in a band with at the time he was telling me like that game you're playing right there it's a rip off of Diablo and I'm like <laughs> okay cool <laughs> good shit so uh eventually I'll drop that fucking what like $50 set it up on Steam I don't know how much is fucking Diablo now mm. or can you get it on Steam that's actually a good well, question oh no you but, can that, that's basically steam game like i mean it depends on which one you want like i personally like diablo 3 that's just my shit well then i'll take mm-hmm. for it i like to start shit from well, the beginning but well I, I like the the two more i think it's it's got it's got the old graphics but i yeah, like a lot the, of the old school that. i like the old school uh, uh, clicky clicky thing and when it's not so fast also the diablo 3 is more fast and more like comic looking and two is is raw and dark uh, uh, I, I love the this dark and theme of it. Well, that's what I've always said is like, can I get like a uh, something that's as closely based on demonology as I can get? Like that was that was mm-hmm. my whole thing. Like I want something that feels like it has some inspiration from actual demonology or mythology or something um, to kind of tie it in with shit that I'm actually interested in. Um, but I'll find out one of these days. <laughs> I, I I can't remember what fuck it. It's not um Dante's Inferno, even though that Yo, one's I a pretty good with game. That, though. It's all it's also slasher though, right? Yeah. What the fuck is that other one? It's uh I think it is Dante's Inferno, but I can't. The guy with the white hair that kills demons. Fucking Christ. Um isn't that the Witcher? What we were just talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the Witcher. laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. Um uh, shit. 
my old fucking roommate used to play the shit out of it. Got all the trophies in it and everything. He beat it like 17 times. It also has some some parts, in, right? Some di- there are some different parts of it. Yeah, there's like four or five games. Fuck. Oh, uh, fuck okay. it. What? Oh, I that's remember... gonna bother me. <laughs> also about the demonology, I remember that Polish some Pol- I think some Polish studio even made a game that you're just getting into hell. Uh, and yeah. I remember there was it was a lot of hype for it. That you're basically a soul in hell, and it was just a so boring and shitty game uh, after all, and nobody played it. Yeah. Wasted potential. <laughs> well, I mean, but I, I don't remember I mean, the name. I'm not sure. It's hard to like make a fucking video game. I think people forget that. Like, it's not it's not easy. You got to have like a whole no a whole, a, like what is it like 20 designers just to to make the game yeah. i mean alone. technically no technically no i mean, you I mean one person there's a game. Flash game well the flash games are the way to go i mean <laughs> honestly <laughs> i you a lot of people would agree with flash games are the way to go because they're stupid and they're really good like flash yeah. games are one yeah. of my favorites but of all also time. Also, there's a, a lot of potential for indie games right now. Yeah, that, a lot that's of people what, like indie yeah, games. Indie games those, are, too. those are also more simple than than most uh, A-tier games right now. But yeah. but a lot of people love them. Love there's a lot of potential for retro retro style shit. Yeah, retro See, style. That's really where fun. that's what I like. I like the old school Nintendo shit more than anything else. Um, so like Super NES, uh, N64, like that's my shit. I fuck with that and like. Um, the closest that we get to stuff like that now is like, I don't know, Among Us is like that simple, but also not quite like I mean that level. There was a game that I found that you would actually probably enjoy. It's called a Siggy. I believe that's what it's called. A Siggy. Like a fart of no, it's S I G I, and it's okay. a fart of whatever. So it's basically about. It's literally. Kind of like a Sonic mixed with Mario. It's a side scroller beat 'em up, basically. And it's it's okay. really fun. The game starts out as you're a knight and you're and you like to fart and eat, and you fart and you throw a mermaid into a fucking coma or some shit, and you gotta fight other people just to get to her. It's actually pretty fun. And <laughs> it's actually really fun. And you can speed run it, which uh, fuck I, speed I, runs. I love speed fuck running. All that. <laughs> I I'm like so speed running. Anti that shit. Well, it's yeah? well. You also can get a trophy for beating it less than an hour, because you can technically beat the game in less than an hour. See, this if is you how you really... know I'm not a real gamer because I just don't fuck with that shit. I I love it. <laughs> well, I I I would never like to speed run a game, but watching it when someone do, does it really well, I'm yeah, like, yeah, watching is... it is so like interesting. Yeah, it's so interesting. I mean, I've low key wanted to start street speed running, but I was like, ah, no, I no, I don't have the patience for that. I do it not have right. the patience for it. You don't know until you. But try watching it, it is. Yeah, but watching it is like watching uh, maybe some extreme extreme sports or something like that. Yeah, it's basically it. I like extreme sports. I like watching people get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. That's good. It's good times. Let's watch people get hurt. Yeah, yeah. Actually, our uh, our drummer is a BM BMX rider. Oh, okay. So, and he's he's re- actually really good at it. You can uh, check out his Instagram. He's got some some videos, and he's actually really legit. So there's a lot of uh, from what I can tell from our social media. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> BMX people listening to our shit. Really, uh, that's thanks to thanks to him because th- that's a that's a that's kind of a society I think. Because when when I when we met uh, Carol, our drummer, he's he's got like so many friends that. Uh, that's they are connected through through the through the bike shit. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's fucking awesome. That's like you know you don't hear about like skater punk that much anymore and shit like that. I obviously it's probably a little weird to compare BMX to skaters, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember when um what was it X Games and shit was like really popular for a while. I thought I was gonna be that guy. I was like, see that guy, I'm gonna do that. 
three broken bones later, I realized this shit ain't for me. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. So I got mad respect for anybody that can do that shit like well. But yeah, it's an untapped market. I don't. I don't know. I feel like they would probably get down to some hardcore music while they're while they're out. You know, doing it's their thing. Most, you know? I mean, when you go into the skating scene, it's mostly punk. Especially hmm. in the older days, it was mostly punk, and then now nowadays it's rap. Obviously now, but but it was mostly punk. Was well, mostly I do punk. think that there's a, a bit of a crossover now. I mean, I feel like more more than ever, you got people who listen to punk, rap, and metal. That yeah. that it, I don't think it ever used to be this way. I don't think you know the genres were so all inclusive um, as they are now, where you know, fucking Trippy Red's gonna decide, oh, I'm gonna write a fucking punk Shut album. Up. Fucking MGK, I'm gonna write a punk album. <laughs> you know, and I look, you say shut up, I I'm all for it. I, I think that it's attention to the hardcore Red. scene. I I don't like him either, but you know what? I I don't have yeah, to like actually him. Don't like him though. I fucking can't stand him. I don't I know how like anybody him. can work with him. I don't have to like him. <laughs> No, because, like, uh, the fact that he's in, like, a totally different sphere, the rap game, and he's bringing all this traffic over to hardcore punk and metal, like... I mean, yeah, that I'm cool with, but don't cool make with. music. <laughs> 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 like, stop, don't make music. I'm sorry. Uh, I, well, well, I, I just don't care about it, I think. I, I, I don't even listen to it. I, like, check, I'm checking, like, uh, one song or two, because I, I see all the press, press about it, but I just don't care. Exactly. And and I think that that's the right attitude for it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Coming coming back to, to the BMX, I, I remember when our drummer once said that uh, when he's he's riding his BMX on a skate park, he, he can't listen to uh, to hardcore music because he's going to kill somebody on the spot. <laughs> Just ride through somebody. And, too hard. And I, when I see, and when I see uh, on a Spotify friends, that he's listening to some chill shit like an um, Aurora or some other ambient things. Right. Then I know I know he's he's skating. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually an interesting question. Outside of like punk metal and hardcore, like what what other kinds of music are you guys uh, fucking with? Mm, actually, there's there's kind of a lot because uh, most of us likes uh, likes uh, hip hop, even some more old school stuff. Like I know that Carol, uh, our drummer, loves uh, Polish uh, rapper Swan. It's actually an interesting case. He's uh, rapping in Polish mostly, I, I think always, but he's got some English features. And he's actually an old school sounding hip hop uh, musician, but he's singing about some demon shit, gore shit, and he's like a, he's got some metal lyrics actually in in his in his work. So yeah, we've got some hip hop. We've got some. I don't know, lo-fi. I love to listen to some lo-fi to just chill out from, from stuff. I love, jo I love Joji. Uh, he's a great one. And also we've got, in Poland, we've got someone who sounds like, uh, it's it's not a copycat, but uh, th there's a lot of ins uh, inspiration from Joji. The guy is called Tony Yoru. He also sang a lot of uh, in metal core band in Poland. And now he's doing some uh, lo-fi pop shit. So it, it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, and like I said before, like some ambient uh, music, uh, Aurora is a great example. I think our bassist and drummer loves it. Just it's I think I I I don't really like it, but it's like a mm, it sounds a little uh, hmm, uh, folkish, something like this, some folk folk ambient stuff. So yeah, the it's it's a complete contrast to metal. So. <laughs> No, and like people who have been <laughs> longtime listeners know that like we kind of have like a weird like range of music that we fuck with. Like I have yeah. days where I just want to hear like super upbeat techno shit. So like DJ Splash <laughs> is like my classic. Something about that battle. And I just want to hear some super <laughs> I, I, fucking depressed emo shit. Like um, <laughs> emo rap shit. Yeah. Like, Where's my happy metal hmm. bands? Happy I had metal a good bands? day. <laughs> <laughs> i quit i quit oh my god well i mean in a way like wasn't um hatebreed kind of more like emotionally positive in a lot of ways um because i know that like finn Hate McKinsey from punk rock mba talks about like you know them having like being kind of like uh the black sheep in their lyrical content because they don't like dwell on like really like fucked up shit i don't know personally because i've never I mean, really fucked with hate breed other than to just destroy everything like <laughs> they've, they've, they've got some motivational motivational tracks i think but okay. 
are they happy though? <laughs> that <you sound> <laughs> That's a good question. That's the same a good, thing yeah, with yeah. I prevail. It's the same thing with I prevail. I prevail. Too. Yeah. Well, True. I actually don't listen to I prevail, so um, I, I don't know. They're, they're more either. famous for their Taylor Swift cover. <laughs> That's how they got famous. <laughs> That's, that's probably what I'm not listening to them. <laughs> I just probably <sighs> saw that and was like, nah. <laughs> I mean, breakup songs work. She made a whole career out of it. Yeah, actually. I mean, how else can you describe Taylor Swift's career? I really don't know. <laughs> that's it. Uh, you can't. That's it. So uh, Ch- Chelsea Green is a Tyler Swift of Deathcore? <laughs> Yo! Oh, God. That's fucking hilarious. Ooh. Say it's in my face. Ooh. So now I actually understand the lyrics of, uh, what is it? Rick Riant? Jokes. Ah, uh, yeah. I go all the way back to Desolation of Eden with uh, that. all my favorite shit. Like, as bad as Desolation of Eden was, especially when you, like, re-listen to it and you hear all the inhales and stuff, like, <laughs> still fuck with that record. It was so badly yeah, produced, but I, I don't know why I, I'm always brought back to that one. <laughs> especially because you listen, listen, to, <laughs> listen to that fucking record and then listen to Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And if you don't respect the growth... Yeah. Then I don't know what to tell you, man. And then mm-hmm. obviously Tom's killing it. I think Chelsea Grin is better now with Tom. But well, I actually loved the Alexis style. So yeah, I was, I, I'm, I'm, I like, a... I'm so like indifferent. Like I like both That's their what, styles. Yeah, exactly. Because <sighs> because Tom really t- Tom technically is as a fucking monster, and I loved him in Chelsea Green and his records at Chelsea Green was. Totally my uh, and it's what I'm saying. And Lorna Shore, I loved his work at Lorna Shore, and it was totally my shit. I love those uh, uh, high, uh, those highs and all, all his styles. But when it comes to uh, uh, to Alex, uh, just just his style, and I even I even quite like the uh, the way that he changed uh, his sound on every record. Mm-hmm. It's probably because he was destroying his voice or something. No, he like legitimately that. was. Like, if you look but, at like some of the older interviews, he does talk about like what he did to his voice, not just because, yeah. like, the his highs, the like they sound that way because they're he's fucking up his throat, he's shredding those yeah. vocal cords doing that. Yeah, but actually, when you listen to it, it's actually it's uh, I, I, it's, it's it's adding some flavor to it. I, think. I do think like as much as people want to shit on bad vocal techniques, it's it does add an element of like emotional, you know, to it. Yeah. Like I mean, that's how I listen to Knocked Loose because I know he's not going to be able to scream like that forever. My case um, hmm. for that is um, look at what happened to uh, I forget his name, but the guy from Devil Wears Prada. His voice is mm-hmm. totally different now than it was when they first started, and I think that he sounds a lot like um, with Roots Above and uh, Branches Below. He sounds a lot like uh, their vocalist on that album. That's just I don't know. That's mm-hmm. that's what I hear. Well. If it comes to Devil Wears Prada, like uh, I think he he sounded more more raw and more 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 distorted on this his earlier stuff. Yeah. But right now, <laughs> he he damaged his voice, but he sounds so emotionally great, and it's 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 getting through exactly like like I wanted. So I still gotta I check know. out. They it just was... did a, a zombie EP two. But did they release it or did they just announce it? So I don't. I um I found out they're doing a live stream, and I think it's sometime this uh-huh. month. I actually gotta I'll double check that while we're uh, looking while we're talking right here. But yeah, um, Devil yeah. Wears is doing um another mm-hmm. zombie EP. Yeah, the the first one was uh, one of the greatest probably. It's it's my absolute. Favorite. I remember it was. Yeah, yeah. It's so heavy, but the band itself is not that heavy. But the EP it really really shows that they can smash. <laughs> Exactly. And I felt like that was the point. So I also I also like the their second EP Alien because it was just because of the the aesthetics and that they got like one topic for a whole EP, same with Zombie. Mm-hmm. And they just stick it with it and even instrumentally you can you can hear like some some inspirations from the from the overall topic. And that's great. I like that they do concept albums now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm actually, I'm actually kind of scared for for the zombie too, because uh, too. 
uh, well, what if it happens like it's gonna be maybe it's gonna be a fucking great album, but it's not gonna be heavy. And what 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 people will say? Well, the thing is, is like, how are you going to announce that you're releasing a second zombie EP and then not make a banger? I feel like that is a smack in the face of your OG fans. Hmm. But I've got the article in front of me. It looks like um, their live stream event is May 15th and they're going to release it mm. May 21st through Solid oh, Solid so State. In month. Yeah, yeah. It, we're right about that point. We're at the 17th. So, yeah, in in a month. Um, this is definitely pulling on my nostalgia strings for sure. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but I used to throw down in my bedroom to that fucking EP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I don't know. Uh, is there anything else uh, you guys want to talk about before we ultimately uh, wrap this shit up? I don't think well, so. <laughs> well I, I don't know i can i can always uh ask you like you know uh, if someone will uh, just advertise my shit like <laughs> for people because it's it's a great way like it's a great way to, to talk with you and to get some attention for our music because mm -hmm. as we're still so so much an underground band and i think that the the thing that we can talk through through an internet and and connect this way and show our music to to a broader people uh, just makes it so awesome so yeah if anyone from from listeners uh, are curious what the fuck is violent answer <laughs> who the fuck is this dude just just check out our music and and it'll be lovely you like chugs you like screamies <laughs> you like breakdowns fucking smack that button go listen to this shit exactly yeah I don't know what I don't even know why you guys are still listening at this point. Like, why aren't you already <laughs> listening to the band? Because they're fucking awesome. We're annoying. I'm sure at this point you guys are fucking I'll pause the with podcast. Us. No, no, I'll finish it. Finish it. <laughs> nah, dude. We try to have it fun. We try to have fun. Keep it light. Keep it fun. Ah, uh, dude. But um, before we let you go, man, was there anybody you wanted to shout out or to shit talk? I know we've done enough shit talking probably for one uh, podcast. Well, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna pick on anybody. Uh, I think our lyrics are enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good point. So yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, just shout out to to all the boys from from the crew, Violent Answer. Uh, shout out to our merch designer, uh, Raiden's Art on Instagram. Great dude. Uh, and shout out to our photographer, Stahu. Uh, <laughs> uh, ama amazing guy uh, so yeah that's right you heard it this is the shit this is the shit <laughs> all right guys uh <laughs> thanks for tuning in um and as always get fucked yeah <laughs>